This is uh, Kevin Opp with Encores Group and today I'm going to walk you through the process to make a one-paged resume um, using Adobe InDesign and as I launch this I'm using uh, 2022 uh, but what I'm going to show you works in some of the earlier versions as well. So let's start by showing you what we're going to build. Here's one I built a couple days ago. Uh, as I said it's a simple one-page resume um, let's take a look at the structure. I'm going to go here to screen mode and to normal. And you'll see that it's a one, two, three, four, five column uh, grid. Um, four columns are used for text and the, uh, the header. Uh, I've got a photo and some supporting uh, smaller information copy here on this uh, narrow column. Got a logo at the top and a web address at the bottom. So let's get this thing started. So I'm going to go to File, New, Document, and I'm going to leave most of the defaults as they are. Um, we are doing a print piece. Um, the other options in here, of course, are web and mobile. Um, if you're doing something for those uh, devices, uh, it's just going to be a one-page document, and I'm going to turn off facing pages uh, what that does is sets up left and right pages if you're doing a, a book or a booklet or something like that. Size is 8.5 by 11. Columns, you could adjust them here, uh, or I could adjust them when I get into the application, but I already know that I want five columns, so I might as well just get that started. And then the gutter uh, is that space between the columns, and I want to bump that up to a quarter of an inch so there's a little bit of space between these columns. Um, the margins, uh, I know that I want some space at the top and the bottom uh, for the logo and for the uh, web address. So uh, right now this is locked, so no matter what, if you put, you know, whatever you put into top, it's going to reflect into all of these. So if I hit top and then hit a tab, you see that it changed all of them. But I don't want that. Uh, I'm going to turn that off, and I know that at the top and the bottom I want an inch, but on the left and the right, uh, I want uh, a little bit more, uh, I want narrower um, margins. So I'm going to adjust those to three quarters of an inch on the left and the right. Bleed and slug, uh, we're not going to really uh, get into those. Uh, those again are used for uh, print and for uh, multi-page documents. Um, we, um, we won't need those, so let's just, let's just move forward. So there we go. All right, so here's our grid. Uh, we're ready to put content into it. Let's take a look back here. Notice up here I can toggle back to the, the original document. Um, let's start by in bringing the logo up into that upper uh, right corner. Uh, this one happens to be, notice here at our transform, uh, 1.72 inches wide just so that we can replicate this on our, our document. Let's go back here. So at this point, I don't really need to worry about that. I'm going to come over here to this tool here, which is the rectangular frame tool. Uh, and this is the um, device that allows us to bring in graphics. I'm going to create a big box like this. Um, the interesting thing about uh, InDesign versus Illustrator and uh, Photoshop is that InDesign is a tool that brings things together. So you, you import things into this document. Unlike Illustrator, which you create illustrations from scratch, or Photoshop, you might be doing photo manipulation. Uh, none of the stuff that you bring into this application is embedded. Um, so you just have to maintain, you have to keep an eye in terms of where your links are that you, uh, when you're bringing things into it. And I'll go through how to package this when we're all said and done at the end. Um, all right, so I've got a, uh, a box created, and I want to go up here to File, uh, Place. And this is going to bring me to a, um, a folder that I created uh, before this, where I put all my resources. So I've got my text files, uh, I've got uh, some graphic files, and I'm going to select the Encores Group Horizontal Logo. Okay. So notice that it came in, and it's much larger than that box that I've um, that I've built. 
uh, we have a couple of options to get the content to fit. The first and the easiest is to go up under Object, Fitting, Fitting, Fit Content Proportionally. And notice what it did is it resized that um, artwork into that box. So that's one way to do it. If I was to undo this, the alternative would be to hit this direct selection tool, click on the artwork, and notice that the bounding box for the artwork, again, is much larger than our window. So I'm going to hold a shift key and I'm going to grab uh, one of the corners. And the reason I'm holding the shift key is to main the proportion of that logo. And I'm going to squeeze it like that. And I'm going to squeeze it like that. And you can move it inside that box with your up and down and your left arrow keys. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to click back off. I'm going to zoom in here with the uh, magnifying glass so we can look a little closer up here. Um, now, remember when I said, you know, I looked at that measurement on the other, when we looked at this one, we said that box was 1.72. So let's try that here. Let's make this 1.72. So you notice it, it crunched it again. So we're going to just move this over. I'm holding the shift key to, to kind of stay uh, horizontal. And let's bring our logo into that window right there. And that looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm clicking out. Uh, I like to, you know, make sure that you have a nice, clean, cleanly organized page so I see all this extra space on the top and the bottom and that kind of drives me nuts. So I'm putting my cursor at the top here, and I'm just going to close that up. And I'm going to move that there. And now uh, I want to get this into position, so I'm going to click on that uh, box. Again, I'm holding the Shift key and my mouse, and I'm going to push it up there. And what that does, when you hold the Shift key, it only goes up and down, or it only goes left and right when you're holding the, the Shift. So it keeps it uh, aligned to where we had it before. All right, so that looks pretty good. Let's go to, um, let's fit in page here. So there we go. So there's our logo. Let's see how, it's, it's pretty close to that one. Um, so next step, what we want to do is I'm going to introduce the, uh, the web address down here. So um, we used the box selection before to bring a graphic in. Now we're going to use this text tool, this type tool, and I'm going to create a text box down here and I'm just going to type in the web address and I'm going to um, select all and first thing I want to do is I want to get this thing oriented so that it's uh, going to align up with this right column so come over here to paragraph notice I have an icon for flush left for centered for flush right click that one and notice how it went to the right. If I hit centered, it's centered, it's left, centered, and right. Okay. So position-wise, I'm good. We're going to zoom in again with our magnifying glass. And I'm going to click on my selection tool. And I want to make sure that this text aligns with the edge of the column. So what I just did is I was holding my mouse and I moved it a little bit to the left. Again, now I'm holding the shift key. Watch what happens. I'm going to go directly down. All right. Now I'm going to format this text so that it looks like what we've got here. And if I was to highlight this text, it's telling me that that is Nexa black. Um, it is 10 point set on 12 points of letting. Nexa is our, our corporate uh, font here at in Chorus. So let's go back over to Entitled. Let's highlight our text. And so this shows a default, which is Gotham, which I don't want. So I'm going to click on uh, the arrow. And right there at the top of the list, uh, you may have to scroll through um, all your fonts to find what you're looking for. But uh, Nexa Black is what I want. I'm going to click here. And then this first um, box is your point size. And I want 10, so I'm going to type in 10. And 
because there's not multiple lines of text, the 15 is irrelevant. I, you know, I will make it 12, just, again, keeping things clean. Um, as we scroll through these boxes, just an explanation. This is a kerning tool, so this uh, allows you to control the, the distance between um, letters. By putting the cursor in, you can control the, the, uh, the, the amount of space between them. And then the second one over here, this controls the amount of space between letters and words um, in larger paragraphs. And this will come into play in a few minutes, and I'll show you how this is a very um, helpful tool. Um, you, can, you can screw around with the proportions of the letter forms by adjusting the height and adjusting the width. But as a uh, guy who's been teaching typography for uh, 35 years, please don't do that. Um, type designers have spent a lot of time crafting these letter forms to be perfect and we don't want to uh, you know screw around with the proportions by doing crazy things like this or crazy things like that it's just it's just wrong so we're not going to do that I'm going to return that to 100% and 100% there okay so it looks beautiful so let's go back to uh, fit page and window all right, so there we are. We've got the logo. We've got the, the web address. Um, let's bring in now our, our text for the, um, uh, for the resume. Let's just take another look at it. So what I did here is I'm going to bring this in as a Word doc, but I separated the what I'm going to call the header, uh, which is going to have a little bit of a different typographic treatment than this um, body copy that's down here. So the way this works is I'm going to come over here again to my type tool. I'm going to create this big type box right there. And I just aligned it here and clicked and dragged to it fit that space. Now the way you'll know that you've got a type box versus a object box is you see that blinking cursor uh, as an indication so you could either start to type if you wanted to but I don't because I don't have time to type all of this narrative. Or you can go to File and go to Place. And I'm going to introduce uh, this Word document, uh, Jane Smith Resume doc. Down here, um, this is helpful. Uh, if you show the import options, click on that for a second. And I'm going to open. It'll give me a dialog box. And in here, and why this is important is that because uh, you have two options. One is to remove the styles and formatting. So if you noticed in that doc before I opened it, uh, I had the um, project titles were bold and the descriptions were in regular, um, which is kind of nice because it allows you to uh, format text a little bit easier. Or you can, um, actually in this particular case, it takes all those styles out. If I clicked here, uh, it leaves the bold and regular uh, as it was in the original document. It's up to you. Um, if you're doing multi-page documents, sometimes this comes in very handy because you forget what's bold and what's regular, and what's italic and such. So for this exercise, I'm going to just preserve the styles and you'll see what happens. So there, we've got bold and regular text. All right, so as I mentioned, I want to break this into two different um, text boxes because I want to do some formatting to this that's different from down here. This right now is all set, I think, in Times, yeah, it's Times New Roman, which, um, you know, it's a default, but we're going to use our, our, our font, and I'll show you what that is in a minute. I'm going to copy this text, highlight it, edit, copy, edit, and then I want to um, clear. And then I'm going to just move this stuff up like that. I'm going to move it down a little bit. I'm going to create a new text box. Remember the cursor's blinking. And then I'm going to paste. So I just used a macro, but you would have gone up to edit and then paste right there. Alright, so the first thing then, I'm going to format this text up here uh, to fit our corporate standards. So I'm going to highlight Jane Smith AIA. And um, what I did in the other document, show over here, this is uh, 16 point, um, point size and it's set in minion bold. Um, obviously in your, your systems you're going to have a lot of different fonts and I'm, you probably do have 
uh, standards that you're going to hit for. So assumption here is that our standard is minion bold. Back, I'm going to have, I have times Roman right now. I'm going to go find uh, minion. So I'm going to scroll through my list of uh, 10,000 fonts here until I can find minion. I've been collecting fonts for as you know quite a long time as you might imagine. And here we go. Come on. And um, I want let's do Minion Pro, that's fine. And I want it to be bold. So there's minion bold. All right, so that's the headline, and then her title, which is Senior Architect, that is set in 10-point minion italic. So let's go back, highlight this, and we're going to look for minion italic. So I'm going to just jump up here. There's minion. And the second box here should show me italic. There. All right, so that one's set um, right there. Again, remember I talked about kind of closing this stuff up so that it's, it's nice and clean. All right, and now what we want to do is we're going to format this um, content down here. So if we go back over to our resume and we look at this one, and I just highlight a bunch of this. This is set in minion 10 on 12. So there's it's set in 10 point type and then the distance between the lines is measured in points and that's 12 point. Um, the reason that this line is blank is because you've got a combination of both bold font and uh, regular. So if I click here you see bold, here you see regular. All right, so let's go back to our document and Let's get things started first. I'm going to highlight, select all. So we're good on the, the size. It's already set at 10 on 12. Uh, it's quite possible that that um, Times New Roman, when it was set uh, in Word, it was set in 10 on 12. So you may have to adjust it, or maybe it comes in OK. Um, let's go back and at least change the, the, the font family, which again is Minion. So I'm going to go back up here. Minion, it's right there. All right, so what happened now is everything is Minion. Uh, and, it's, and it defaulted to Minion Bold. So what's nice is that by changing the font family, it also made the changes for you here as well. It makes our life a little bit easier. So we don't have to go through and highlight and change each one of them. Um, now, one of the issues we run into is that uh, this resume uh, runs over one page. So a couple of options. Uh, if this was a multi-page resume, um, what we would do is we say, okay, our text is going to stop down here. And this little symbol down here, what that means is that there's copy outside of your, your frame and you either have to remove it or move it to another page. Um, so let's, let me show you how that works. So let's say that you have this issue and you are going to have a multi-page document, which again, we're, we're, this is just a one-pager, so, but I'll show you how, how to deal with this. We would come up to the Pages icon here, and I'm going to create a second page by clicking and dragging to there. And then I'm going to create a, a text frame. So this text has got to go somewhere, right? So I'm going to create another text box. Make sure it's nice and clean right against that gutter. Okay. And what what we do here is I'm going to come back to this first box. I'm going to click, uh, I have the direct selection tool is clicked. I'm going to click on this little red plus symbol. Notice how I got this kind of, of um, text um, icon, I guess. I'm going to come down here in the center of my box and click. So now what happens is that this box is connected to this box. And if I, just to show you how that works, if I was to put my cursor up here at Canandaigua, push, notice it pushed it over to the second page. All right. 
So that's kind of a neat, uh, neat, neat tool to connect, um, you know, multi, multi pages. But um, again, we're, we're just doing a one pager. So um, let's say that this, you know, it's a state proposal and you're limited to one page per, per person. Um, so what I would do is I'm just going to open this up and say, well, this last project wasn't as important as the other ones, so let's just delete it in the interest of getting everything to fit on one page. I'm going to clean this up again. I'm going to shut that. Okay. Now, the reason that that is showing up is because it still thinks that there's text there. So let's yep, see there's two lines right there. I'm going to get rid of those. And now, when I close that box, it should be good. There we go. Um, now, one of the other things we can do here, let's go back to our properties. Um, if you brought something in from Microsoft Word, maybe you have a, you know, your standards are such that your text is always going to be flush left uh, and rag right, which this is referred to as rag right, where it's not, you know, not um, even on this side. Or you may want to uh, format it, and it looks clean if we do this, to do what we call justified text. Justified means that uh, it aligns on the left and it aligns on the right. Um, so you get kind of a nice, clean looking box. And let's, let's go up here just for a second. Go to View, Screen Mode. Let's go to Preview. You see what I mean? It's nice and it's clean, right? Okay. So let's go back to normal. So again, going back to my um, typography uh, instructional uh, days, one of the things I'm looking through this, I said it looks pretty good. Uh, it's pretty clean. A um, couple of things that I would like to fix just within this. One is um, at the very bottom here where I have the one word on a line. In typography terms, this is called a widow. And widows are, are undesirable because it forces the eye to, to take the time to read one word on a line before it jumps down to the next paragraph. So one of the ways I can get rid of this um, is I'm going to highlight you know, just this section right here probably would be enough. And if you remember, I talked about this tool over here where it can, can take space out of words and out of letters. And I'm going to do something as to go to minus 5. And this is based on a typographic increment. I won't get into the details of it. But you see how just that minus 5 was enough to bring that one little word up onto the line. And it looks cleaner now um, instead of having that little straggler. You know, these lines because they've got multiple words on them are fine. So we're good there. All right, now the next trick I want to show you is um, what happens is that there's a habit in, uh, in, in, in people work, when you work in Microsoft or when you work in Word is to put a double space um, before the start of every sentence. You know, in, in um, typing papers and things like that's great, but when you're doing publishing and you're doing desktop publishing, uh, it's, it's, it's unnecessary and it takes up uh, more space than you need. And again, when you're in a situation where you've got to get a lot of content onto a page because you have a page limitation, you'd be surprised how sometimes you don't need those extra spaces. How do we get rid of them? There's a real cool little tool here. I'm going to go up to Edit, Find Change, and right now it's empty. I'm going to hit in. You won't be able to see anything here, but it says Find What. I'm going to hit Bang Bang, which is uh, I'm hitting the space bar twice. Now I'm going to change that to one, um, one space. If I come over here to change all, it found one, right? So it found one replacement and it took care of that, that space up there. Um, if you've got a multi-page document, it's a great tool to be able to get rid of all those spaces at the same time. All right, so we've got this all formatted. We've got our header looking pretty good. Let's bring in our, our headshot. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to hit that um, box tool again that allows us to bring in graphics. And I'm going to put my cursor in this upper left corner. I'm going to create a picture box. Notice it's a little too wide. That's going to drive me nuts. So I'm going to go back and put it right on the guide, right there. Uh, you know how we can make this easier is to zoom in on it, right? And we want things to be perfect. So I'm going to get there. All right, so now we have this active picture box. I'm going to go to File, Place. 
and Jane Smith headshot. There we go. And I had that image option uh, turned on, so we're just going to say OK. And uh, looks pretty good. Uh, we're in a pre, we're in a kind of an overview mode, so that's why it looks a little digitized. Uh, I'll show you how to fix that in just a second. Uh, notice there's a little bit of white space at the top and a little bit of white space at the bottom. So I want to uh, make sure that this picture sits right at the very top of the margin. So I'm going to click, and like before, I decrease the size. Now I want to make the size a little bit bigger, and that looks good. And I just moved it up a little bit so that it it um, goes right to the very top of our page and maybe shift it over a little bit so her eyes are kind of in the middle of the frame um, and that looks pretty good. I'm looking as we're zoomed in here I notice that the text box is slightly off so I'm going to move that right there. Okay, let's um, fit page and window and let's just take a quick peek see how things are looking. Okay, looks better. Notice how it doesn't look as digitized um, in this particular uh, view. All right, uh, a couple other things we're going to add, which is kind of those, uh, the, you know, the stats that uh, they always ask for. Those are going to go here, and then I put a, I'll put a nice rule in here to kind of separate the two areas. So let's go to, um, let's go back to our normal mode, so we can see our grid. Um, I'm going to create another uh, text box here. Like that, and let's just jump back so we see what we're doing. So it's this information that's right in here, and then I mentioned there's a rule that I'll add in a minute. So um, let's go back to our document, let's go file, place, and this stuff I called sidebar. So I'm gonna bring this in. And remember, I got this. You know, the I have this turned on, so it's gonna ask us to bring this all in. Notice that, that, uh, that, again, you see that little red bar there, or little red box indicating that the text, there's more text below our text frame. Um, so let's see how much there is to deal with. There we go, so we have that last piece there. So because this information is in a sidebar, um, uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be the same point size as our main copy over here. Um, I traditionally make it a little bit smaller because there's, uh, there's a lot of, uh, you want it to be able to fit and look clean when, you, when it's sitting over here. So what I did in this um, example, I like this, is this is 9 on 11. So slightly smaller, uh, but I still have that bold and regular uh, that I used in, in this particular section here. So let's go back to there and let's highlight all of this text. And again, it's Times New Roman, which we don't want. We want Minion so that we're consistent. Minion right here. And we want nine point right there. And then we want to use uh, 11 uh, points of letting. That's the distance between the lines. And then we're going to hit OK. Now let's uh, zoom in so we can clean this up a little bit and see a little bit more detail. There we go. All right. So um, because uh, it was set with bold and regular type in uh, the Word doc, it imported the same way here. So we're good there. Um, it doesn't look that bad, actually. So education, I mark at Harvard. Uh, this is kind of an un, un, you know unfortunate um, hyphen, so let's just just put this on two lines. It looks a lot cleaner that way. Um, do you need to say license number, or can we, you know, take some liberty and do things like that, which again cleans things up, makes it less lines. Um, so that looks pretty good. Let's move this here, up here, and this is you know standard stuff that you're going to be asked for on, on resumes. We do a lot of federal work, so they always need to know the citizenship and. Um, and such. So that looks pretty good there. Let's go back to view um, fit in window. Okay, we're getting there. So this is looking pretty good shape. Again, I'm going to clean this up and move here. The last thing I want to do is I like to separate kind of this information from this information and that thin rule 
it creates kind of a nice visual barrier between um, the left and the right. So how would we do that? I'm going to come over here to my rule tool, the line tool they call it. I'm going to click and I'm going to put my cursor at the very top. I'm going to click and I'm going to hold. And I'm going to hold the shift key because what this does is it keeps the orientation um, going directly south like this. If I let go, ooh, I can go back and forth like this, but I don't want that. I want to keep it uh, nice and straight. And so now I've got a, a rule that's drawn here, but it has um, has no weight and has no color. So over here on this tool, notice how these uh, palettes also appear based on what you select over here, which is kind of nice. You don't have to go hunting for them. So the stroke, um, you know, one is a little heavy. Uh, you can you can start with one and then click here and go like a half a point. I, I like things a little on the lighter side. It's a little it's, it's a little bit more elegant. Doesn't look as horsey uh, compared to the weight of the type in here. Uh, color is set to black, which I think is fine. So I'm going to click off and let's go back to our view uh, preview mode. And that looks pretty good. Um, you know, uh, let's go back and look at our original and let's look at that. Rotate spread, preview. Okay, so that's what we start. That's what we were shooting for, and I think we're pretty close. Um, one of the things I probably should have done earlier, and and you probably want to be in the habit of doing this, is to make sure you save your document. So I'm going to go up here and go file, save as. Uh, call it Jane, one pager. You guys have uh, all have your file um, naming nomenclature. Uh, and I'm going to come over here to the desktop, and I've got uh, InDesign demo, and I'll just save it out here um, outside of my, my demo. Save. Okay. So now we've got this nice looking resume. What do we do with it? Um, we have a couple of options. The first is to, uh, to save a PDF. How would I do that? I'm going to go to File, uh, Adobe PDF Presets, uh, and here's your options. Typically, with uh, a page like this, it's a one pager with just a photo and some text. Even as a high quality print, it's not going to be a super um, large file. Uh, you're always concerned about file size in terms of emailing. Um, you could do smallest file size, it's not going to have much of an effect. It might make the photo slightly grainier. Um, so, you can do some experimenting with that. But for, for this, I'm just going to say high quality print. Uh, notice it uses the same file name up here because I've got this clicked. Uh, and then I'm going to hit save. And I get this dialog box. And in my particular case, I always have this clicked. It says view the PDF after exporting. So once I hit export, it's going to open up and I can, I can do an immediate proof to make sure it's what I want um, in terms of the, uh, the document. So I'm going to hit export. And there we go. We get exactly what um, we uh, what we want. So I'm going to click out of that. So that's that's saved in that same folder. Um, the other one I wanted to show you with is file. You may on occasion get you know another firm call and say, hey, can you package your document and send it to us? Uh, and what that allows them to do is to take all your materials, potentially reformat it to their uh, to their standards. Um, it, it does happen on occasion. The way you would do this is go to File, Package. You'll get this dialog box. It's going to ask you, um, you know, it's going to tell you how many, you know, links. In this particular case, uh, there's two links, which would be, of course, the logo and the photo. Um, it's using RGB color space. If you're not doing print, don't worry about it. Um, and then the next one down is going to tell you all the fonts that you used and your links and what is, you know, what the links are. Um, so these are all the things that it would package for you. And I would hit package and you're going to get this, uh, you're going to ask where you want to put it. So I'm going to put it in my um, InDesign demo folder here, right there. Uh, and here's your, your options. You can either, you, you don't have to send uh, the fonts to someone if you don't want to, if, you're, if they're particularly licensed uh, and you can't do that, you unclick here. But you can send them the graphics and the files and all that kind of stuff. And it will include a PDF. It will make another one for you in that folder. 
hit package and then you get this warning again I, because I have the fonts um, clicked it's just telling you that you know there's copyrights associated with the fonts um, and you should be at least aware of the fact that you're you know you're trading the back and forth and just hit OK it will collect that document and um, I go over here come on um, there's that Jane one pager folder and everything we just collected is right there um, all right, one last little kind of uh, fun thing. Let's say that um, you are doing this as a dig as a PDF. Um, I'm going to highlight this. Let's make this a hyperlink to our website. And the way I would do that is I just highlighted the, the uh, information there. I'm going to go to um, hyperlinks. I'm going to create a new hyperlink. And I want that to go to Encorus.com. Notice it, it pasted it in automatically for me. I'm going to hit OK. OK, everything's good here. Now I want to make a PDF again. High quality PDF. Jane Pager. It's going to probably ask if you can write over the top. I want to yes, that's fine. Uh, but here in this dialog box, again, see where this says hyperlink? If you click on that and hit export, notice what it did. It's put an underscore here. And if I clicked on this, it would take you to our uh, our website. Uh, but that would be shameful advertising on my part, so I'm not going to click on that hyperlink. Um, all right, I think I've covered everything on the one-page resume. So I'm going to end this on, uh, on this one, and then I will start up again on the um, project page in just a moment.